So this is Palmetto State Armories, AK556. Now serial number, I mean, I guess it's different, but like the, the model, the production number is 310 and it's stamped all the same on every single part. Um, So this thing's pretty damn cool. Looks like they literally just stuck like an AR-15 type lower piece. I mean, it's a little bit different than your standard AR because it has the mag release for an AK. But so right here, you can release the mag or you can release it right there which I like because, um, I mean, even me being uh, left-handed, I can't get to the mag release right there. So what's cool about that is now I can use my hand, my right hand for changing out the magazine. So I got me a magazine coupler in there and it does work. It does work with the magazine coupler, even whenever I go to this side, because now the bolt can ride over and the safety can ride over it. Looks like they just bolted on this lower piece right here. And I also noticed that they have a little Allen screw, which I'm not 100% sure what that's for yet, but I will figure that out. So right here, where you press down, so if, you, you, if your bolt's locked to the rear, you'd press down on this guy right here, and then that would drop the bolt. Also, it has a um, JMAC buffer tube on it. Now, you can get the regular AK-556. This one's a little bit different. I wanted to get the little bit cooler one, so I asked for this one as a 13.7 inch barrel, pin and welded, so it's considered a rifle with the JMAC flash hider, which is pretty cool. Also has a Soviet arms handrail. Went down the line, we got a JMAC buffer tube right here. So this is not a side folder like the other AKs that I own. So this thing does not fold. Um, I also wish it had some kind of QD attachment right here. And there's a few different things I'm gonna change out in this rifle. And what I'll talk about is I've never been a big fan of these stocks just because of that this thing wobbles these cheaper magpul stocks do wobble you can upgrade one of these and you can get the it has like a little uh mechanism right here it's where you can lock it in place and that locks the whole stock from moving on you from wiggling on you all that good stuff now into the ergonomics of the rifle whenever i present the rifle first thing i notice with this buffer tube is that it's really hard to get on them iron sights i have to get a really high cheek weld to be up on those thank god the rifle does not recoil at all pretty much so it does not hurt my cheek as you know if you've ever fired something that has a little bit of recoil if you have a really hard cheek weld it could really bruise up your cheekbone i've had that happen with certain ak's that recoil a lot especially like wassers and stuff like that so next thing going down the line this thing does have a bulge trunnion which is pretty sweet it's on both sides the savas and some russian rifles have this bulge trunnion that just helps with your reinforcement you know of the trunnion itself now, to take off this guy right here, the gas tube, there's a little threaded piece right there. And you would literally have to stick a wrench on there and kind of move that to loosen this guy out. Otherwise, this you can't just move this lever, this lever up and it takes out the whole gas tube and to knock out the, uh, the handrail too, the handguard. So you can't do that. Another cool thing, which I don't really use these, but I like the option, is a side mount, the dust cover. If, as you notice, it's kind of like that Russian style dust cover. It's not smooth like most of their other um, AK, AK series Palmetto offers. That's pretty sweet. Now let's get into the guts of the rifle real quick. And rifle being brand new, dust covers are always gonna be hard to get on and off. You have to work them in. I'm looking at the bolt carrier and the bolt. It has a true thin stem like you would see on a 74 or anything like that. And it has tool craft markings. So now on my YouTube page, I know a lot of guys ask me because they own the 103 too, like I own the AK-103. And they'd ask me if it's made by Toolcraft. And you know, I never got a for sure answer for them. My answer is no, it's not made by Toolcraft because it does not have any logos on it made by Toolcraft. This thing has logos engraved right into it. So right there, you're gonna have a logo right there. Also, also right there, you're gonna have a logo also says 556 five, right on it stamp 310 as well this thing is obviously tool craft so it's going to be a little bit stronger than there from what i've seen now let's get into the trunnion itself that's also stamped with tool craft if you guys can see this or not so bear with me i got brass shavings all inside there and i only fired 60 rounds through this thing i'm gonna chalk that up as a you know it just being new just shredding it it does have m4 feed ramps in it and one of the rounds that chase was shooting actually took a nosedive so it went straight up and it got lodged in there 
and he charged it a couple times and it would not come out so uh yeah we had to mess with that a little bit <sighs> otherwise guys this thing is ergonomically sweet and recoils like nothing i'm not even exaggerating i can put up some videos like where i'm shooting it and like some of my 762 ak's i only could fire like three to four rounds and i'm like you know i'm getting off target a little bit i have to readjust they just recoil a lot more you know if you're not used to it this thing is not like that there's like no recoil to it it's so crazy i've shot an ar-15s that had really light recoil and this is on par with those like if you get the better buffer system and you know you do some shit to your ar-15s where you gas it just right or like a rifle link ar-15 and they they're just recoiled just perfectly this thing's just like that no exaggeration at all in there let's see this is brand new so now i got the o light on there we was messing around at night that's not going to stay on here i'm actually going to be getting a surefire here pretty soon and let's put some rounds through this thing let's do a little bit of mag dumping real quick firing 223 through this thing and um seeming like it, it's seeming like if they don't have enough power i mean it's firing it's cycling i mean i guess it's not cycling every two rounds i'm getting a failure to failure to cycle pretty much it's almost like there isn't enough power in these rounds to to uh do what it needs to do to get the gun to work so i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna try some more and see what happens I mean, no guarantees, I guess. I don't know what that was about or um why i was getting failure to cycle but it's really weird it almost seems like the rounds they did not have enough power but it seems like the more i just kind of pushed through it cycled them i got a full magazine to go full magazine and a half so maybe just maybe it needs to kind of work itself into uh working right i guess ak's are known for that sometimes maybe they just need a little bit more firing pretty much 
this thing, as you can see from me firing it and literally like I had the phone right here and like, I'm just, I'm, I'm not really, I'm trying to aim in like the vicinity of whatever, you know what I'm saying? And I'm just pulling a trigger. And now imagine if I really had a good cheek weld, this thing wasn't moving. Put a good red dot on here or whatever the case is, like a different stock or something like that and even run the irons, I bet I could even get better shots. All right, you guys, this will conclude the AK-556. I'm gonna keep shooting this thing and I'll let you guys know anything that's going on with it. Overall, me being a left-handed guy shooting this thing, it's really user-friendly. Like the more I shoot it, the more I realize I think that um, I don't have an AR-15 that recoils less than this thing. And it's crazy, it's accurate. The only problem I've, I've had is a few different malfunctions that I don't think an AR-15 would do. We'll see if it works itself out though. All right, y'all, be safe, God bless, I'm out.